Hey, what's up guys? Warren S. Hill Rock Sculptor. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be looking at reference images. Um, I use reference images a lot in my work in which um, Mother Nature is the best source for that. Unfortunately, if you live in an area that doesn't have rock, um, you're kind of limited, limited to the World Wide Web in which um, Google Images and Bing are the best sources for uh, imagery. Let's just jump right in and show you what I'm looking for and how to use it in your work. Okay, so reference image number one. Um, my video guy had put these together, so I think it's cool. We're just, I've never seen these before. I might have ran, ran across them on the web through my journeys, in which these are right off the hip. So the first thing I'm looking at, in, at least in this image, is uh, the broad sheer face of this wall and its fractures and what angle they're running in. So we look at this, this fracture right here. It's not quite level on a horizontal plane also you've got these vertical fractures that are also running semi-vertical and then some of them are kind of triangular and what's cool about that when i'm looking at that which is an important feature of any reference is discovering the grain of the rock all rock has a grain some of it's chaotic some of it's predictable this one if you look at this angle right here where it looks like some rock pieces actually fell out from below. Pretty straight on the cut. You can see it looks like a pizza slice left behind right there. And a little baby one right here. These are indications of what where the grain is running. Secondly, when you're doing boulders, if you look at these boulders down at the bottom, these were once part of a formation that was inside this rock feature or the, or the mass scale of it. So when you're doing a boulder, you're actually outlining a shape of fractures because that boulder was part of that formation and it had fell out, okay? The other thing um, I'm going to look at on this image, by the way, this is a great image, is the color. Look at the color palette. We'll look at this block of color right here, right? It's kind of a beige, buckskin, sandstone looking color. And then you got this dark gray wash. And look at the cloudy formation, you know, where they meet up. Um, is it a soft blend, like some of this up here, or even this, or is it a harsh blend? All right. You got also got these cool little flakes. They're also used for um, areas in which you can change color. Let me see if I can point something out that's a better example there. Um, maybe this right here. Okay, we got this little flake, and then we've got this dark wash right underneath that almost like an eyelid so pretty cool reference other thing too is uh this is pretty plumb this looks like it's going straight north and south doesn't have a whole lot of tip um inward or outward all right next image this is a really nice image um same thing look at the grain of the rock kind of uh, emanating from right here we've got some nice horizontal lines moving through that but then you also got this large flake that runs through the whole thing really cool neat drop shadow in there again pretty plain color variance is just enough to keep it kind of subdued um you can notice it's a little bit more richer in color tone than the stuff on the bottom and also what helps this rock illuminate is the sun it looks like it's hitting the face of it pretty aggressive okay enough to at least drop this shadow down. All right, here's an up close feature. And let me rewind that. What's nice about having an up close, you could apply textures like that to features like that and this one as well. So I think that's pretty cool because this information, at least on this graphic, we don't know what the surface details are of that, right? So back to this. This looks like the grain is running this way. You can kind of see it running almost like a broom was dragged through the surface of the mud, or in this case, the rock. Again, color differentials right here. You got a white, and then where this flaked off, kind of the subtone under color. Next image, this is heavily fractured rock. Um, now, this is, this is a neat image to kind of look at. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Look at these fractures, they're pretty chaotic. Uh, they're running northeast, southwest, and, and all in between. So 
I probably would stay away from using this reference in my work. It might make it a little more complicated to generate something that has a little more rhythm and flow. Again, when I'm creating rock, I'm, I feel like I'm creating art. There's composition involved. I'm using the rule of thirds. I'm using the golden rule. All these things really do apply as we use textures, fractures, shadows, and everything to kind of paint our masterpiece. But we're doing it sculpturally, sculpturally. Okay. Okay, here's a neat little boulder that's pretty divided up into major chunks. Um, not something I would really use. I think that's the good purpose of this video. Not all reference is good reference, I think. I think um, using this could create more busyness in your work. So I would definitely back off the throttle on using something like this. Now, this does strike me right here, this neat little half moon, Half moon details in here is pretty cool. Um, the way this fractured is pretty nice, but for me, this is a little too busy. I wouldn't fabricate a boulder that looks like that, but to each his own. Oh man, this is really nice. Okay, so this has rhythm and melody right off the rip. I'm looking at the grain of the rock. You can see the bands are running this way. This, even this boulder. Look at this shape detail on the end. Um, obviously, there was a boulder inside this dark spot at one point. It's no longer there. Gives us clues and points to follow as to what happened. And it helps us make better decisions when we're, um, when we're carving rock. Second thing is we've got a diagonal fracture that starts off right at the base. It runs through here. And you can see each time it, it hits a new layer, the, the fracture gets offset a little bit. Really cool. I would definitely implement that in my work, or at least try to. Okay. This is interesting. This is um, a lot of cross marks, I'm saying, that, that draw my eye. I wouldn't particularly use this, although there are features that could be extracted that would look pretty cool in your work. Again, a little too busy on the busy meter for me, though. This is really nice. This is obviously a massive feature. What I'm looking at is um, the dark to light. This seems to be real oxidized. This, this seems to be still eroding. Um, so not much I can really use here, but what I could do is use this on like backdrop if you had a large project in which you were um, needed something like a retaining wall and you're looking for colors. This is a kind of a cool color template. It's not illuminated, it's in shade, so it's not really showing off its true beauty. Um, the sunlight really helps illuminate its characteristics, so be mindful of that when you're selecting your reference. This is interesting, got some interesting fissures here. Um, if you're in the you know, southwest, you'll you kind of see a lot of this, a lot of this honeycombing, um, wind drifts, and then the fracture. Look at the way the fracture, the shape of the fracture runs. Um, not necessarily something we would have on my projects, but a wall piece or something like that, something you want to do something cataclysmic, this would be something I would probably use um, for that. This is cool. Really cool. Um, interesting shape right here. This, this really caught my eye. This little swoop. Not sure I would include that in my work. I would probably stay more with the jagged. Something like that, that nice ridge line. This draws my eye, real soft and swoopy S-curve, sine waves. I usually try to stay away from them. Okay, fracture looks good. There's the grain of the rock. You can see the grain of the rock is kind of running this way, right? How do we know that? We can see these lines, line one, line two, line three. You got north and south, and then you got a diagonal that runs through that. Same thing here, and same thing here running this way. So, neat little reference. Hopefully this video was useful and um, in which kind of what to look at, what to extract out of the photos. It can get a little daunting in the beginning, like what you should be looking at. Um, look at the form, look at the color, look at the texture. Those are gonna give you indications of what you can use out of that or what you find attractive in your work. So, have any questions, leave them in below. Um, sources for gathering these, Bing, I like to be, the, is the best for me. 
Google Images seem to be a lot more advertisements right now for some reason. So it's hard getting high quality or high res images. Um, Flickr is also another good one. Um, hit or miss on whether you could download the photo or not and catalog it. I think it's super important, you know, saving these off and storing them and looking at them when you, uh, when you start your next rock job. So, all right guys, peace out. Catch you on the next one. Later.